everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome back to my sewing room. Today begins another sewing vlog on the Daniel Deronda riding habit. And that wouldn't be strange, like I'm sure you're expecting this vlog today, except for the fact that right now it's Friday night. <laughs> I know that normally I take these vlogs and go through Saturday night, but this week, kind of like last week, has sucked. And I've spent pretty much all of what would be my sewing time on the phone dealing with the awfulness that is State Farm Insurance. Do not recommend. <laughs> anyway, so because of that, I have yet to do any progress whatsoever on Daniel Deronda since the end of the last video. So if you remember at the end of the last video, I had successfully mocked up the sleeves and I was ready to cut out the sleeves from the wool so that I can then cut out the front panel of the skirt out of the remaining wool and actually put the skirt together. I know we did not get very far last week. So I still need to do that. As I said, I have not done anything at all. I haven't really even been in the sewing room. <laughs> so I have a lot to do. This video will most assuredly go at least through Sunday because I do want to give you guys some actual content and we'll see if maybe I'll squish it even a little past that as well. But the first thing is going to be the sleeves. Now I mentioned in the last video that I was trying to decide whether I would do the sleeves in that attached cuff method like it showed in Prior Tire's book where the cuff is literally cut in one and then it's just the underside of the cuff which becomes the outer side of the cuff that would be cut separately. But like basically this part of the sleeve and the inside of the cuff is all cut in one and there'd be two seams and no seam around the bottom edge of the cuff. And I realized that's not right for this jacket because you can see in pictures of this jacket with her cuff there's not very good pictures of it but you can see there's only one seam and really it's not a seam it's it's like petals overlapping but there's no seam on the other side of the cuff so that method does not work for this which is good because that means that my sleeve is going to be three and a half inches or so shorter which means that I have a longer length for the skirt so honestly that's a good thing by cutting the cuff separately, I can cut it out of smaller scraps bits of fabric. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. I have the bodice here with the sleeve mock-up still attached. I'm going to undo the sleeve mock-up from here and cut off the cuff. I already made a note to this where the line is that it's going to be cut, which is basically it's the fold line that I had had on the cuff plus a half inch for seam allowance. So I'm going to cut it on that marked line and that will be it on the cuff fit and then I can undo these two seams of the sleeve and then cut out my two pieces of each type, you know, upper, lower sleeve. I can cut out the four sleeve pieces out of the wool and then also cut out sleeve pieces, hopefully, out of more sateen. I mentioned it in my last video and I have not yet checked, but I don't know if I have any more cotton sateen and I don't want to waste time on a trip to Joanne's. So if I don't have cotton sateen, the other sleeve lining is going to be muslin. And you know what? I probably will forget that one is one and one is the other eventually because muslin and sateen, they're the same weight. It's just that sateen is a lot smoother. If you want to know more about fabrics and you missed my all about fabric video. I actually did a video on this like two weeks ago so I will link that video down below so that you can learn all about the different types of fabrics. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this and I will see you probably after I cut the sleeves out once I start assembling them because I think I'm going to go ahead and assemble the sleeves before I get into assembling the skirt but probably after I cut out the skirt. So yeah I'll see you in a little bit. So the sleeves are all right here. They are flat lined or they're pinned to be flat lined, ready to be surged. I did find more of the sateen. So this is sateen on the inner portion and then the wool on the outer. And I'll go ahead and just surge around the outsides of those in a little bit. 
but I have also been working on the front panel of the skirt. It's actually not going to be that much shorter, I think. I think I got this to like 58 and a half inches long, something like that. So we're, you know, close-ish. And I didn't even measure what the diagonal is that I'm working on. But what's going on here is that this bit here is going to come down and make up that part down here coming off of here. It's not going to be nearly as wide as like sizing this up to scale of what the waist is. But this is what I can do with the fabric that I have. So there we go. I'm going to go ahead, sew that on, and then I will have a front panel ready to go. So it is now two in the morning, but we have a front piece with its little extensions. They're not much, but they're something. And the front piece will be ready to be added to the back pieces that have been hanging out on there all week tomorrow. So that is great. Hopefully I can get those all put together and pleated up to a waistband and hemmed because since it is so long, I don't have to worry about like measuring the hem. So that's great. This is still a lot longer than my actual length. So I will be able to get that little like pull up to the side thing that riding habit skirts have. And the sleeve pieces are ready to be surged. So that will be able to happen tomorrow. Hopefully I will get those all put together and put onto the bodice. And I have enough fabric left that I can cut all of the cuffs out of that. So that is great. And things are looking good. <laughs> Cross fingers, knock on wood, all of that. And I'm hoping for a pretty full day of sewing tomorrow so that I can have lots of content to show you tomorrow of me doing the skirt and the sleeves. And who knows, maybe there will even be time for more. But we're actually going to get someplace with some progress on this project. It is now Saturday evening. I did take a little bit of time earlier today to work on Daniel Deronda, and in that time, first off, I realized I forgot to cut a couple pieces out yesterday, so I cut out all of my pockets. These are just out of quilting cotton, and they happen to be very close color to the dress, so that's great. So I've got four of these pocket pieces. I've surged around all of the edges of these so that they're all finished. And then I also use this same cotton for the waistband. Now I mentioned, I think back in the last video, that I was not sure if I wanted to make the waistband for this skirt out of this wool because it's so thick and I did decide yeah it's I mean if I put the waistband out of the wool <laughs> it's just gonna be so bulky right at the waistband where you don't want bulk so what I did instead was I cut it not only out of the quilting cotton here but it's a pretty thin quilting cotton like I think it's the country classics type from Joann's it's just pretty thin and so I decided that I would back it with organdy because the organdy will give it a lot more of the structure but it'll still be super super thin and lightweight but it will give me kind of more of like an interfaced type structure so that'll be really good so this is a four inch strip and it is the length of the width of the green fabric so I think it was like 44 inches that should be just fine that'll give me enough where I can have like a little tab overlap which is what I prefer when I'm making my waistbands and I've just surged around the edges so that I can combine these two pieces together so that is the waistband done and then I also speaking of surging went and did all of the surging around all of the sleeve pieces so those are now all good to go they've been pressed and everything and now for the sleeves I'm going to go ahead and take take, you know, the proper two pieces of the sleeve together and combine them into a sleeve and sew up the sides. And at that point, I will be switching to the skirt. And for the skirt, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be attaching the pocket sides to the sides of the skirt. Now in Isabella's book, she says that you can have this skirt close up either on a side or in the back even though she shows it as being cut on a centerfold in the back. I mentioned this in the last video, but there is no way that the skirt can be cut on a fold in the back. The pieces are just way, way too wide. I mean, it's a full panel for each side of the back of the skirt. So I'm going to have mine close in the center back, and hopefully it will be pretty hidden both A, within the pleats of the skirt, and B, by the tails of the jacket. That will completely cover the opening. I'll probably do like a little, like a one inch overlap where it comes over for the closure. But what that does is it will leave the sides of the skirt 
free to not have a closure and to just have pockets. So that is great. So those pockets will go in, it'll be one attached to each side of the front and then one attached to each back panel like on the side here and that gets sewn on with a 3 8 inch seam allowance and then the half inch seam allowance gets used to actually put those together. So I have showed how to do pockets in a lot of other videos at this point so that's all you're getting from me on pockets. I'm going to go ahead and do that sewing now and sew those side bits of the sleeves and press them open and I will talk to you again once that part is done. The skirt panels are all assembled. So yeah, it's quite a bit here and hopefully I'll be able to plate it down to my waistband in a relatively easy manner. The way that I usually like to determine pleats and stuff is to put it on the dress form and then just kind of see where those pleats want to lie. Like for example, looking at my reference images for this, I know that I should have pleats that start here on the bodice and then get more and more dense until we get to the back that you can see over here. So the back will be quite densely pleated. The front will be just like a pleat here, a pleat here, a pleat here, etc. So that should be good and hopefully I'll wind up with the pockets in the right place. If it winds up that I just have way too much fabric in the back then I will just redo the center back seam and take some of that out because that'll be the easiest place to adjust it from. By the way, I did mention before that the front was going to wind up shorter than the back because I wound up realizing that I did not have enough fabric. That may have been in the last video that I mentioned that, so I apologize if uh, <laughs> the story doesn't necessarily track from one video to another. Hopefully you've seen the last one. And if you haven't, of course, that is linked down below. But when I was doing my seams, it wound up being, I think it's like about four or so inches off that the back was longer than the front. So we're not talking a huge difference. Like this is totally fine. The front is still way, way longer than my waist to floor measurement. So yeah, totally, totally fine. And once I just like even that out so that it comes around and meets the sides evenly, then I will be able to hem it just there. And I'll probably do a at least about a two inch deep hem just because I want it to kind of hold a little bit of weight at the bottom as well, just so that it'll help the drape. But I'm not gonna do the hem until after I put it on the waistband. So next thing is going to be, I'm gonna go put a, just a random petticoat on the form, put this over that. I might put a little bit of a bum pad in. I don't know if they wore bum pads for riding. So if I do put a bum pad in there, it's gonna be quite small just to kind of help the tails of the jacket. But yeah, we'll see. I might put one in there. But that's all gonna go on there. And then I'm just going to pleat the waist up to the form. The form is not my exact waist measurement, but that usually gets me close enough that when I'm actually putting it on the waistband, like once I've taken it off of the form and I'm putting it on the waistband, that I only have to squidge the pleats a tiny, tiny bit. Like she's within, I think about one inch of my waist. So I should be good there. And I'm gonna do all that. And I might also set the sleeves tonight. We'll see how that goes. And this is what the skirt now looks like with the pleats all done to the waist measurement of this dress form. You can see how dense those pleats get in the back and I will talk to you about those more right now. So let's talk pleats here for a moment. As I mentioned, I always prefer to put the pleats onto the dress form just to see how they're going to hang. That way I can see like where on the skirt the pleats start to get more dense or you know just how the skirt is going to hang as it goes over the form. Underneath the skirt riding habit skirt right now, I have just a very, very small bum pad. And then I put my quilted bustle era petticoat on underneath that. It's made out of matelassé and I figured it would do a good job of dealing with such a heavy fabric on the top layer. So that's what's under there right now. And it seems to be doing a good job. I don't know for sure if matelassé, if that quilted petticoat is the right answer for this, but everything else would have just crumbled under the weight. And speaking of weight, so while pinning this on, 
I found that the fabric was really wanting to like stretch even as I was pinning it because it's such a dense wool with like that blanket level wool what happens is that it's been basically felted down into that thickness so that means that if you work at it it can stretch and that's what's happening as I'm pleating it there so I know there's going to be probably quite a bit of adjustment once I get this off of the form and actually do it to the waistband which is my next step now but on the form it looks good I measured the front pleats so between like each of these pleats here there's a two inch gap I did not measure the depth of the pleat I just measured the distance between each of those pleats and then the back pleats are completely eyeballed the only thing that I did with the back is that like there's the pleat where the pocket slit is which is just about at the side seam and then there's one more pleat past that which is two inches past and then there's one pleat that is like I don't know like one and a quarter inches I didn't measure it but I eyeballed it so that it was the same on each side a little bit larger and then that pleat though may get smaller like it may get more deep because as I put it onto the waistband I will probably find that it needs to get deeper and then the rest of them are all eyeballed and just pleated kind of as tightly as I could go I started doing on the first side I started doing them and then it wound up with a lot of extra fabric left so I had to make them even smaller and deeper so there's a lot of bulk there because each pleat is overlapping with another pleat so sewing it onto the waistband is going to be fun but it is what it is I did look in Isabella's book and she said you could knife pleat or cartridge pleat and she said something about grading knife pleats to reduce bulk I don't know what that means and I have yet to look that up so I may look that up and see if that's a great thing but if that's like a matter of cutting away the extra fabric I don't want to do that honestly I don't feel like doing that then I'd have a bunch of cuts in this fabric and yeah no not for me so yeah I think it's just gonna be what it is at least the waistband itself isn't gonna be super thick <laughs> that hopefully will help and then the one other thing that I noticed is when I was checking the distance of the very front pleats here I actually put the bodice onto the form and the bodice I feel like was looking long now granted this has a shorter waist or a shorter waisted than I am so it has a shorter torso than I have but it still looked like the bodice even from just waist to hem of the bodice was hanging down over the pleats a lot lower than in my inspiration I haven't finished that edge yet so I can completely cut that off that's totally fine I haven't even done buttons I haven't spaced them anything like that so we're in a good place here and I think that it's a good thing that I've done the skirt now because now I can finish the waistband and then try on the skirt with the bodice to see where they come together and see if I do need to in fact shorten the bodice so I'm gonna take a little break and then I am going to get back to the waistband the waistband is all done and I think it looks great. I'm so glad that I decided to go with the cotton because if I had gone with anything thicker than what I used, there is no way it would have gone through the machine. Like even so, it was kind of a challenge getting through this all the way through the machine, but I did manage to do all of this on the machine, including stitching in the ditch. That's how I always do my waistbands. I do right sides together and then flip it and fold in the inside and stitch in the ditch. I know I have shown this in other videos. I think particularly last year's video about making three cozy winter skirts. So I will link that one down below because I think that's where I went into the most detail. But yeah, waistband is all done and by machine. So it will need hooks and bars on the waist. And then the other thing that I did was that I leveled where it was uneven on the hem. So it is now even all the way around or rather I mean it's it's a lot longer in the back but the sides where they meet are even and now I can do the hem on this I am going to do a hand hem because I think machine stitching would look really ugly on such dense wool so I am going to fold this up probably about two inches or so and then also fold in the inside like half an inch and just whip that by hand and then I will have to figure out how it is that I like do the mechanism of actually pulling this up and keeping it so that you know it's not stepped on when it's walked especially for something so heavy I'm really not sure exactly how that will work and it does not say in Isabella's book so 
yeah, I will have to figure that out. That won't be in this video thing though, that will be later. But my next thing tonight is that I am going to set the sleeves in the bodice. That way I can put the bodice on the dress form and it will have sleeves, doesn't have, you know, the collar or anything yet. But the horsehair canvas actually did arrive. This is the horsehair canvas in here. So that looks like this. I'm hoping that it's like the right stuff because it feels really lightweight. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, this is the sew-in interfacing horsehair canvas. And this is what will be inside the collar facing. So I think that because the wool is already so like hefty, I think this will be okay. But we'll see. That however will be also a next video thing because this video is going to be about the sleeves and finishing the hem. We'll see if I get to cuffs. I don't know that I will because it is now, I guess, Sunday morning, technically at 1.20 in the morning. And I don't know how much time I'm going to have to sew tomorrow today. And we're going to cut this video off after Sunday. So pretty good progress, though, for Saturday. I'm very happy so far. And I'm going to go set those sleeves in. No sleeveles! <laughs> Now, granted, I'm not wearing the corset or anything like that, and I'm wearing a dress with three-quarter sleeves under, so it's a little bulky inside the sleeve, but oh my gosh, that was like the nicest, calmest that I've ever fit in a fitted sleeve ever. I'm really glad that I didn't take anything more out of the mock-up that you would have seen in the last video, because in that mock-up, there was still like a little bit of ease, and I did do an ease stitch in here, but the ease stitch, just pulling it up a little bit, it wound up making it totally fitted. I mean, you can't see like any gathering whatsoever in the sleeve heads. So I'm super, super happy with how those fit in. They really are fantastic. If I wasn't wearing the bulky dress underneath, I think it would be perfect because right now the dress is all stuck right here. But yeah, I'm super pleased with how that fit in. I maybe hopefully can do cuffs tomorrow because this went so easily that I'm actually gonna go to bed right now and maybe I'll be able to wake up early enough to work more on all of this. But yeah, I'm, again, I'm just like shocked at how easily these went in. It was like so easy. I mean, I just did that e stitch, pinned it in place with all of the marks that I had put on from the mock-up and sewed it on the machine while listening to a Samantha American Girl audiobook on, on YouTube, and that was it. So yeah, very, very exciting. By the way, that was your hint for the next project. The coat, the red coat that I mentioned before, that's getting pushed back a project, and I found the wool for Samantha's cloak. So Samantha's cloak is gonna be the next project after Daniel Deronda is finished. It's gonna be really hard for me to push through and finish Daniel Dorando because of how excited I am about the Samantha Cloak project. But yeah. And if you saw my post on Instagram from by the time you're seeing this like a week and a half ago, you already know about the Samantha Cloak. So do follow me on Instagram if you wanna actually learn about things in real time. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. Anyway, this is gonna be it for me for tonight. Tomorrow I will be back with the hem of the skirt and hopefully sleeve cuffs. So I know that from here it doesn't really look any different from when you saw it yesterday, but the skirt is now hemmed. So that is good. I'm glad that that's done. I did it all by hand so it did take a while and that is all I wound up having time to do today. It still needs cuffs, obviously it still needs all the bodice finishing and everything, and I need to put them on and decide if I do need to shorten the bodice hem at all to see just where everything lies on me. So that is all going to happen next week. I know that this week's sewing was very condensed down into about two and a half-ish days, but we are going to be back at it next week, so do make sure that you check back a week from now for that next vlog. I do hope that you liked today's video though. If you liked today's video, please go ahead and click the thumbs up icon. And if you'd like to see more videos like this from me, please go ahead and click subscribe and the little bell icon to be notified every time I post a new video. I do post videos here on YouTube twice a week with my sewing vlogs like this out on Tuesdays and other costuming content out on Saturdays, but I post every day over on my Instagram. So please go follow me on Instagram. That's at Lady Rebecca Fashions. And if you'd like to help support all of the work that I do on this 
channel. I do have a link to my Patreon and my Ko-fi down in the description below. I'd also like to give a special shout out to my Edwardian level patrons, Sharon and Julie. Thank you all so, so much for joining me today. Have a wonderful week, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Happy sewing!